Craig Emelman, and uh, I was lucky enough to coach for the part of about five years, six years, six years, actually. And uh, Coach Cosgrove was, was nice enough to ask me if I'd come up tonight and go over some of the basic drills that uh, now we like to run, which are some of the drills that you guys will be running from time to time over the course of the year. Hey, what's going on? Uh, the biggest thing, guys, that, that that I want you to understand is that the drills that, that we're going to uh, be working with are not drills that uh, that I made up or Coach Costco made up. They're drills that were, were used by a very famous coach named John Gordon, who was a coach of this LA for years and years. And the drills are designed to help you win basketball games. They're not designed to win championships. They're not designed to get you in the NBA. What they are designed to do is to make help you improve yourself fundamentally on the basketball court. And you know, over the course of the season, I think the biggest thing that you want to look at is whether or not your team is improving and whether or not you're improving fundamentally. And the way you improve fundamentally is by properly and quickly executing things the way they're supposed to be done. Fundamentals just means doing things the proper way, doing it the easy way, the fun way, stopping and starting properly. The drills are very repetitious. That means you do them over and over and over again. You're going to be doing a drill. Uh, you'll be doing some jump stops, for example. And I, I can tell you that uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who probably many of you guys ever saw play, but he did jump stops for, for nine years straight. He did them at, at UCLA. He did them in the pros. If you go and watch the Lakers practice now, you'll see them doing jump stops and, and pivots with, uh, with Phil Jackson. So it's just developing the, your, your ability to move quickly and properly on the court. Now, the first thing I want to touch on in the future when you guys come to practice with Coach's Blessing, I want all you guys to bring the basketball. And the first thing I want to touch on, I'm going to use some of the guys that I coached last year to demonstrate, and then I'm going to get you guys going, is you want to know how to walk in the gym and properly warm up. So let's walk down here. And let's watch. Let me get to Ryan. Ryan, I want you to start in close, go side to side, and move out slow. So, when you come into a gym, the first thing you should be doing is you should be starting right in close to the basket, and this is the way you get the properly warmed up. I want you guys to go and watch. If you guys want to go watch the NBA player play, if you were to go down to the Staples Center and watch Alan Iverson or, or, or uh, I don't know, pick your favorite NBA player, I don't know, Jason Williams or kind of really great, great NBA player, this is the way NBA players warm up. They come to the gym, they start close to the basket, and they gradually move out. I watch you guys come in tonight. You guys are walking in the gym, and they're starting out shooting three-pointers and jump shots and grouping around. You get to the gym, this is the way you start to warm up. Now, taking that a step further, there's basically, hold on for a second, guys. Good job. There's basically four areas on the court that you want to be able to score from. This is called the low post area. You want to be able to score down here. Doesn't matter how tall you are. You guys are shorter. Everybody needs to be able to post up and score down here. Everybody needs to be able to get the ball here and score. Everybody needs to be able to get the ball here and score. And everybody needs to be able to get the ball in this area and score and this area and score. Last place is right up here at the top of the key. Now, your ability to play a good shot for yourself depends on whether or not you have good footwork. If you have to take more than one or two dribbles to get a shot, what's up, Lamar? If it, that's, if you got more. If, you're gonna, if you need more than one or two dribbles to break your own shot, you're taking way, way, way too much time. Unless you're going to finish with a layup. So, when you get the ball, you want to be able to pivot quickly and correctly, make space for yourself. Now, I'm not going to have the time to go through all the individual moves with you guys, but I want some of you guys to demonstrate how they will form up working on those parts of the court. So Chandler, let's have you go over here on that basket, and we'll, I'll tell you what, Chandler, why don't you come in here, back spin it, block the block, keep the ball, and finish. Go. Get the ball here. Uh, Brian, why don't you take this basket over here, and you go ahead and work on the way, and get it to finish. And Mark Cotter, why don't you go over this, why don't you come right this basket right here, and I want you to work the elbows. Back spin it to the elbows, get it, and we're going to ready, go. You mix it up. Don't get the other way, go. Go to work. 
say, you watch these guys, you watch the killer. You can see he's got an array of individual offensive four. This is the stuff that he just woke up. He just woke up and 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 he this is called getting better. Don't say that. If you don't have to do this, you to show you how to work on this. You can do it. When you come to practice, I want you guys, there, there, there's two things. And I, I won't say, I'll pretend like John's here and tell him to shut up. But there's two things you got to understand about basketball and about life. The most important word in the world is love. The second most important word is balance. So what does love have to do with basketball? Well, I've been to a lot of basketball teams. You guys have been on a lot of different teams. And guys have said, well, Coach, I want you to come watch my team and help them out with their plays. I go, watch, I go watch the guys practice, and they don't get along with each other. Everyone's looking out for themselves. Everyone's staying on the ball. Guy drops the ball. The other guys, they're not being nice to each other. So if you guys are going to get along with each other and be a team, you've got to be nice to each other. And that's where the word love fits in. I've got a favorite, one of my favorite scenarios is, let me have Jerry, you're going to have everybody pass. We call this square one, square two, square three, and I'll be brief. I'm going to throw Chandler a pass, he's going to drop the ball. Here's player number one. Come on, Chandler, you can't catch. That was a great pass. The guy stinks. It's awful. It's player number one. Here's player number two. And I, I dislike the behavior of player number two even more than I dislike the behavior of player number one. Player number two is my least favorite player. And I hope I never get into a gym and see any of you guys act this way. This is player number two. That's player number two. Player number three. Come on, Jim, we've got pass. So, who are you guys going to be? Player number one, player number two, or player number three? Player number two. We've got to start with that. Because if we don't have everybody acting like player number three, we might as well forget about trying to have a basketball team. You throw a guy a pass, you tell him, my fault, bad pass. Second thing is this. We come to press this one. You guys go to basketball practice, you want to take pride in your appearance, make a neat appearance. Want everyone to tuck their shirts in, pull their socks in. Please. Good job. When we're in practice, when an individual is, when, when the group is stopped to correct an individual, everybody pays attention. It's very, 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 very important. So Coach Stevens and Coach Cosgrove stops the whole group, and they're correcting Chandler Ho, or they're correcting you, or they're correcting you. Everybody should be turning and paying attention. If you're on the other side of the gym, and you're standing over there in the sidelines, and he's coach correcting somebody over here, you need to be looking and listening to what the coach is telling you. The next thing in practice is always watch what the guy in front of you is doing. So if there's a new drill that's introduced, a lot of you guys, like, like, like Umar and, and, and uh, uh, Matt, are pretty familiar with what we do, but you've got to watch the guy in front of you. That way the coaches can move along during the season. So if they're introducing a play or if they're introducing an idea and you're in line, watch what the guy in front of you does. So once you got that down, then you should watch what the other guys are doing. Because the guy that can play every position, Ryan Costco, for example, I can tell you, when he played for me, he could play all five spots. He could play either guard spot, he could play either forward spot, he could also play the center spot because he knew he was a very smart player. So getting playing time, when you can play every position on the court, is that's where you want to be. The next thing is, we're at practice, we always move quickly from spot to spot on the court. When a whistle is blown, everybody stops like that and turns and looks at the coach and see what he's wanting. If you're in the middle of taking a shot to win the NBA championship, take the ball down and look, and turn and look at the coach and see, and see what he wants. So those are our basic rules of practice. We're going to talk very briefly about balance, and then we're going to get into some drills. And we're going to use uh, the guys from last year to demonstrate the drills. 
And uh, then you guys are going to do it as well. Then they'll go all do it as well. But for right now, real quickly, let's talk about balance. Everyone spread out just a little bit and do what I do. Get your feet about as wide as your shoulders. That's good. Bend your knees slightly and get your arms in here. Let's go. Nice and loose. Nice and loose. Okay, the things that control your balance, the first thing is, are your extremities. Your feet, your hands, your head. Everyone take your leg and move your leg way out. And you start to get off what? Balance. Off balance. Now here's a big one, and I don't know how many guys can do this correctly. Everybody take your feet and bring them together. Right now you're off what? You got off balance. Well, coach, I know all that. Well, when we look out in the court and I'm watching defensive sliding, I'm not going to expect to see anybody moving their feet together like this on defense. Because when your feet come together, you're off what? So you want to take short, quick steps. Short, quick steps. So you got our feet about, our feet are about as wide as our shoulders. Okay, now let's take the next part of our body. These arms and hands. Take your arms and hands and move them away from your body. Keep moving. Keep moving. And you get off what? You get off balance. Now, when you have a, when you're on defense, everybody come to this position right here. Elbows close to the body, joints nice and loose, palms up. If you take your arms and you move your arms out, move your arms away from your body, keep moving them, you're off what? You're off balance. If you're very quick with your hands on defense and you like to steal the ball, that's fine. But I think Umar could probably tell you, Umar, you've played against a lot of great players, that some guys that are really quick, if you get out near, what happens? They go by. They go right by. Other guys, we you know what I'm saying. A, the point that I'm making is that because you can get yourself off balance to steal the ball from a bad player doesn't mean it's okay to do it. Because a good player is not going to let you get out here and get off balance. He's going to go by you. So if you're going to be aggressive on the ball, I get guys coaches ask me all the time. So coach, this guy is really, really quick, and I like him to steal the ball, but I don't want him to reach. Well, what's the solution? Stay on balance. What that means, come to this position right here. Come here like this. Right here. That means everyone move your hands. You can be aggressive with your hands. You can get down here. You can take away the crossover dribble. But if you move that arm away from here and you get those shoulders out, you're going to be off balance. Last part is your head. Not the last part. Is your head. And we'll take your head and lean over a little bit. And keep leaning. You're off balance. Now, I can get out all the movies, many basketball you want to pick out, and every time I see something go wrong on the basketball court, it's because somebody is off balance. I see the guy miss a shot, I see the head comes down, everyone we'll bring your head down like this. The head comes down, it goes back like this, and they shoot here, and the hands move out, and they're off balance. Guys that are on balance in this position right here play great basketball. Now, let's talk about shooting the basketball. Bring your hands right here for your regular shot. I'm watching you guys warm up. I see a lot of guys doing this. Everyone come up and do this. Like this. Move your hands away from your body. I was watching the shooting going on over there. And that's off what? Down because your hands are moving away from your body. Keep your hands, now bring your hands, now keep close to your body. Close to your body. Close to your body. There you go. Good. Close to your body. It's not complicated. Close to your body. If that elbow's way out, you're off what? Because you're away from your body. Everything is balanced, guys. It's not a complicated game. You get yourself on balance. The last part of balance is really, really important. And this is something that the coaches have to remember. And I, 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 I have to remind you all the time. Because I wasn't always the greatest to keep my emotional balance. But what that means is this. Everyone come to this position like this. Now take your joints and make them tight. Tight. You're now off balance. Because your joints have to stay loose. And you can't have your physical balance. You can't have your physical balance if you don't have your emotional balance. So every time you get angry, every time you get upset, you're losing your emotional balance. And if you lose your emotional balance, can you have your physical balance? No, you can't. There's nobody that does anything better than when they're angry than how they do it when they're not angry. So keep your self-control. Keep your emotional balance, and that'll help you. You've got to stay loose. You've got to keep your physical balance. There's another thing that's very important about keeping your emotional balance. Never try to be better than somebody else. Never try to be better than somebody else. Do you guys have any control over how good the guy is next to you? No. No. If I put Alan Iverson right here, are you going to be better than him? 
No. If I put my eight-year-old son, Kyle, here, you know we better him? Yeah. You don't have any control over, 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 over what the other guy is doing, so you don't need to be worried about it. A lot of you guys get out there and you practice. Your practice, you think, oh, I'm going to make this team, I'm going to beat this guy out, I'm going to do better than this guy. Concentrate on what you're doing. And don't worry about what the guy next to you is doing. Concentrate on what you're doing. And everything will fall out as it should. Last three things, very quickly. The reason that you guys play basketball is to have fun. That's the reason that you do this. So if you're out here because your parents made you come out here, and you really don't like basketball, I think you ought to talk to your parents. Because this is supposed to be added to have fun. And the greatest thing you're going to get out of basketball are the friends that you make. Make a new friend. All you guys, if you guys don't all know each other, some guy you don't know, don't hang out with the same guys in practice. Make a new friend. Because the greatest thing that you get out of any sports are the friends that you make. That's that, the, I, you know, that's the, I, I, can, I can stop right there. And as far as the, 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 the parents go, I guess they can probably hear me. But what you want to look at, guys, is not what the score of the games are, not how many games you're winning, not how many games you're losing, but are you going out and doing the best you can and whether or not you're improving. Okay? I can tell you, Mark and, 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 and Ryan and Umar and Chandler, one year they played a whole season, they didn't lose any games. They didn't lose one game the entire time. They won the gold, they won all, they just won everything. We didn't lose any games to anybody. And you know what, the you know what we did the next year? The next year, we finished one game under 500. We lost more games than we won. We lost more games than we won. Now, I, we had the same guys on the team. We had the same practices. Do you think these guys got bad all of a sudden? They, did, they, got, they, got, they, they became bad players? No. When they won all the games, they played their own age group, and the next year they played a full year up. They played against guys a year older. So it wasn't about whether or not they were winning or losing games. It's about whether or not you guys are improving. And that's what you want to try to do. Improve and understand the game so that you can enjoy it. So don't, don't focus on winning and losing stuff. Guys, the, the, guy, the team that has the better players is usually going to score more points. Pretty simple. And we, you can play, whoever you play against, you play against. But you don't have control of that. So focus on making yourself the best player that you can be. Okay, that was reasonably short for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 18. Okay. Thank you. 
got these for the right for the days in the last year. What we're trying to do, let's let's have these guys go up once and we'll go up and hold it down there, change the pace, change direction. I'm going to describe the drill while they're doing it, and then I'll get you out the floor. I'll, the wall. I'll get you out the floor, and uh, we'll take you through. Okay, here we go. Go. Let's watch. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Fix it up. Fix it up. You guys are leaning a little bit. Keep your hands at the mid 20 and 2 feet. No set pattern. Ready to go back. Let's go. Head up. Look at your front and shoot the same direction. By pushing off your outside foot, you still keep your head at the mid 20 and 2 feet. So let's take a couple steps out before everybody. Come on, quickly. Come on, hurry. Come on, come on. 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 Go this way, one, two, do what I do. Push, 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 push. Yeah. Just because I don't want a guy to do this very sloppily. You guys watch the Lakers play. You see the really few players the Lakers go to try to do when they hit that post. They hit that weak side post guy coming up and they're executed properly. You'll see them at that post and make that quick change of pace, change direction move coming off. The key to this drill is being able to change direction and keeping your head at the midpoint of your two feet. I see a lot of guys, they change directions. They, they lean over here, they lean over here, and they can't get over. You keep your head still, the head is right there, and you're here, and you're pushing up. We call it change of pace, change of direction, because we're changing direction by pushing our foot, our outside foot. And we call it change of pace because we're trying to mix up the speed. There's no set pattern. You're not trying to go real fast. You're not trying to go real, real slow. You want to keep your head perfectly still. Some of you guys have seen Jamal Wilkes at my basketball camp. Jamal Wilkes does change pace, change direction with a book on his head. And that book stays right on his head while he's doing change pace, change direction. Because you can always get over and keep that head perfectly still. When you change directions, do you think you should take a long step or a short, quick step? Anybody besides the guys from last year? Short, quick, why? You get off balance, you can take a long step. It's not a running drill, it's not a speed drill. I want you to go slow and I want you to work at it. Ready? Go. Head up, work at it. Let's go slow. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Slow down. Okay, now you guys go down the line. You're going to go defensive slide. 
sliding, you go in the part in front of you, cross the free throw line. When this guy pops out, when that stoner pops out, you should be jumping out like this, get to the stands, looking over your shoulder. When Matt crosses the free throw line, then you go. Ready? I want to see good form. Good form. Don't let those feet get close together. Ready to go. Elbows close to the Elbows in here. Elbows close to the body, guys. Elbow good job, man. Start to get ready. Ready? All right, go. Short, quick step. Balance, 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 and more balance.
Given the first down at the free throw line, wait for the whistle, and we're going to have more than the free throw line for the mix. Ready? Go. Go hard. What's your spot? Bend knees. No head, guys. If you go ahead and stay in these drills, and you get the game, you're going to be going all fast, you're going to fall over. So you got to work at this like it's a game situation.
until they blame somebody else. You make all the mistakes you want, but you're not a failure until you blame other people for it. Make a mistake in the game, coach gets on your case, coach my fault. Don't make excuses. No whining, no stealing, my fault. Smile and say Alright, so, let's go. One, two, three, stop, turn, and turn back. Bend your knees. Go. One, two, three, stop, turn, and turn back. Do it low though, get yourself down low. Ready? One, two, three, stop, turn, turn back. Now guys, it's very important that you do this. The most important thing you need to do with your basketball offense, and that's the most important thing, is you got to be able to make space for yourself. When I took these guys, and they were fourth graders, we played against fifth graders, the coach used to make me film small the games, and the first thing I noticed they had to learn how to do to play against better athletes was to be able to pivot. You know what you get the guys off the way? No, 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 Properly execute pivot, and that's something that we like to do in this grip. Okay, let's bring the lines down. This in quickly on a run. Uh, Ryan Chandler is our good basketball player. Good basketball. Go. Two more even balls from Ron State. We have two more balls. Guys, I apologize. I just thought it was basketball. We have two balls in the gym. We got more than two basketballs in the gym. Look outside there. What's that? Oh, poor little guy. What to three? We got three. You have yours. I've got a twenty. I've got a twenty-eight point five. Do you? That'd be great. Okay. Now. Don't dilly dally with the ball, hold it still. Goodness gracious, sakes a lot. Okay, one of the things, perfect, thanks, Umar. One of the things we like to do in this drill, we're not gonna have a chance to have everybody do it tonight, but when we do this drill, we have, everyone has a basketball, okay? Everyone has a basketball, everyone's bringing the ball to practice. And we like to incorporate, we'll do our regular jump stops, and then we do our jump stop, and we're gonna pivot and pivot back. So let's watch these guys, they'll demonstrate it one time. We're going to go out hard, jump stop, pivot, pivot back. Okay, ready? Go! Just watch. Mark Cotter, goodness gracious sakes, let's turn around. Watch, take a lot of line, little coach. What do we want to do? I got a couple of two kids today. That old boy got the line on the left. I tell him to make sure that that Cotter, hold the ball still, come on. Look, everyone turn around. Williams, coach Williams. Come on, coach Williams. Guys. There's two positions that the basketball goes in. Give me the ball, please, sir. One is called, as you know, triple threat. You guys show the triple threat right here. Where you can dribble, pass, and shoot. This is where the ball belongs close to your body when you have a dribble to use and you're a threat to score. You need to watch me, Mark, not over there. And you're a threat to score. The second position we put the ball in is called fully protected. Chile, you know that position well. Fully protected. We take the ball fully protected, we pull it right up to our chest, should we fully protected? Right under our chin, right here. When we get a rebound, the ball gets fully protected. When we catch the ball at the high post of traffic, the ball gets fully protected. When you come across the lane against his own defense, Chandler, and you catch the ball, where do you have to get that ball? Fully protected, because otherwise, somebody's going to take it. And goodness gracious, sex alive, don't let me hear about any of you guys Having some little guard come up and hit you on the arm, which is like that, and you're telling your parents that the rest aren't calling any fans. Because that is going to happen. Show me where that ball goes. Step right in the chest. Pull right in. Hard. Hard. You're going to take that ball off me? No way. Doesn't matter if you hit you there, there, there. All you're going to shoot the free throws. That ball's got to get fully protected. So, in this drill, for the purpose of the drill part, we're going to get the ball fully protected when we jump stop, and then we're going to loosen up a little bit, we're going to pivot, and pivot back. Let's back up. I saw you dangling that ball, I thought I was going to have a cardiac arrest. Well, I tell you, give a guy a summer off, coach. At the playground. Now, stay put, guys. They're making a right-handed dribble, so they're making a left-footed pivot. When they make a left-footed dribble, they're going to make a right-footed pivot. Go. 
Okay? Left foot and dribble, right foot and pivot. Watch, we'll finish out that way. Good, okay. Now, three or four practices in, what we'd like to do with this drill is add something where all you guys need to be able to make what we call a cross step. A cross step or a crossover move is when you're in offense and you can quickly go by somebody and shoot a layup. Or you can quickly go by somebody and shoot a jump shot. You guys do what I do for one minute. Ready? Get like this. Ready? Step. Dribble. Step. Shot. That's just crossing over going down. Go to left. Ready? Step. Dribble with your left hand. Heaven forbid. Step. Shot. So, to incorporate that move into this drill, what the players are going to do is they're going to dribble out, hope your memories are good, they're going to dribble out with their right hand. They're going to do the left foot pivot, back and forth. On the next whistle, they're going to make a quick jab, and they're going to step across and drive with their left hand. They're going to stop, they're going to put it on the right foot. Back, forward. Good. Okay, so you guys can demonstrate. Here we go. Excellent job. You guys take it back to half court. Go quick. Now, as an offensive player, when you develop that cross step, what you'll be looking for, what these guys look for, is a lead foot to attack. So, if I come up on the right house road, right next to the left foot, he's going to go and he's going to attack that lead foot. Because if he were to go this way, I'm still in front of him. But what he did is he saw that one foot up, and he stepped across that foot, and he got his shoulder by my shoulder. If I can't go on the floor, which I would never do because I'm a smart player, but I had this foot up, I'm just making it over more, he's going to attack that left foot. But you've got to develop your individual footwork by doing these drills properly. That way, when you're out in the court and you see the guy, it's one bounce, the guy's free, it's a jump shot. Okay, why don't you guys go ahead and go all the way down the other end and demonstrate that one more time coming back. About 40 minutes ago. Okay. Here you go. Okay, good. All right. Now, let's bring the lines out in the court a little bit quicker than it's possible. Jog them out. Straighten them out. Business. We take these lines, we do this, we call oh, we call this open up. And we're taking our lines and we're opening up. This is what we do all of our imaginary drills. All of our imaginary drills. If you guys were going to study karate, anybody ever take karate? Champions karate. Right. You guys take karate, you know you got to go to the gym and you got to work on your punches. Imagine you have to show up and give you a brick and go, boom. Well, this is how this is what we're working on our karate kids. On balance. First thing we're going to do is we're going to face that basket. We're going to blow the whistle. We're going to be on balance and shoot the basketball. Stay on balance. Let the guys in the front demonstrate one time. One time. Ready? Uh, you can be a shot the bar. You only got to come in for one night. Ready? No hands to be drills. Okay, everybody, here we go. Get basketball position. Ready? Pass straight on the basket. Alright, now, 
We're going to make a quick fake, one bounce to our right, shoot a jump shot, and quickly back to our spot. Let's watch you guys in front demonstrate one time. Ready? Move back quick. Okay, everybody, everybody ready? Shoot, watch the move, the guy in front of you. Ready? Don't float. Guys, if you do this in this drill, I'm looking, a lot of you guys are doing this. You're off what? Off down. It's a quick fake, one bounce, straight up, and slide back. Look at this now. Look at this now. Ready? Let's go. Let's go to the play. Nothing fancy. Now, I'm going to have to demonstrate a couple things real quickly. 
because we got to keep moving. There's two of the things we're going to work on out of this configuration. One is called close teaching. I'm just going to demonstrate this real quickly. Chill in your heart, Carol. Hustle, Carol. We got you. We'll you and Ryan. You ready? Go. Let's go, Mark. Now, we play it, when we play it, when we guard somebody close to the basket, low post, we want to get around three quarters. And when the ball goes to the wing, to the baseline, we step in front. And when the ball goes to the baseline, back in front, we come behind. And when the ball is in the air, we make a decision to either knock the ball away or beware of Mark. Jump to position and create a little bit of space. So that's what we like to work on out of this, to get ourselves in pairs. We don't have time to have to do with everybody, but we just have to Okay, ready? Okay, up. Cool. Uh -huh. 
coach is going to be working with you, you're going to be doing the drill. So this is kind of like taking you to the library and letting you open the book and see, go through the pages and see, 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 see what's there. Okay. Let's talk about a fast play. Let's get everybody back on the base of the Anytime you buy 
yourself. You're going to go down and jump stop and make a jump shoot. Okay, go ahead. Go. So if you're by yourself, just watch the jump stop. Go. Quick jump stop. Finish. Very nice. Okay, it's parallel pass. Okay, guys, let's break back real quickly. Move. Find that in. We'll do this in groups of three, and the next group will stay down at the other end. Now, the second thing we like to do, we call down the middle of three guys' passes to the middle. Give me three guys out. I don't care what's for. Okay? Move on, jump in. Now, in this drill, we're going to get the lanes a little bit tighter, and we're going to position the coach at half court, Coach Stevens. Coach Cotter, you get down there at the other end. He's going to toss the ball off the backboard on three back passes. That's the right. It's a tight read. We're going to go one, two, three. Stop. Now, here's the key part of the break. As Omar comes out of this, you can see he's got his head up, and he can see the court. He's not going to help the skeleton off back. And if he's going to come out with his head up, he's going to step away and cross over with his head up and go by coach. He's just going to be stationary at half court. The other two players, what they're working on right here, is they're going to get tight. But they don't get to stay close so they can get open. No. So you're going to see they're going to break out and get wide so that we can finish the break properly. So let's back it up. Let's go to the Three guys. Yeah. I had a coach one time here, so coach, when does it happen in the game? 
all the time. You guys are getting friends from playing a big basketball game. Something's going on in the court. Everyone has to know how to go. The last fast break drill that we like to use out of these three legs, which is the player's favorite, is called long pass drill. Long pass drill. Now, if we get a rebound, go ahead and out the ball on the side. Jared. Good stuff. If we get a rebound, we see there's a guy streaking towards the basket for an open layup, we're going to throw him a long pass. That ball, that pass, I see you guys doing wrong all the time, is going to have medium arch on it with that. That's going to be the best guy's ever going to throw this pass. That's the more important thing. That ball has to be medium arch on the ball. The ball is going to take off and go on the line. So I'm not throwing the ball to him like this. Okay. On the other hand, Chandler, Chandler, when he comes down on this break, he sees there's nobody back. He's angling in towards the best. He's not running down the sideline. There's nobody back. He's making that good angle. Ryan's going to use one quick dribble, get his bottom down, get medium backspin, get backspin at the ball, and medium march. And you'll see the way the throws finish. The drill's finished with the ball never hitting the ground. Never hitting the ground. And they're going to finish with a pump that up on the other. Okay, this is called a long pass. I'd like to get a coach, Coach Stevens. You're going to be right here half court. And when he makes that pass, he's going to take a nice little easy jump in here to make run and a little bit of march on that ball. Are you guys ready? Go. Long pass. Don't lean on there. The fifth man on the break is going to be the protector. 
So the fifth guy on the break, you're shooting, Jerry, Coach Cotter. The fifth guy on the break is going to stop at half court in case the other team gets a quick steal and goes the other way. What do we have to protect? The basket. The basket. So let's watch what the fifth man does. Hey, Matt Stoner, you know what you're doing? No, you fill away. Go. Run. Good. Now, one change that, I made, that we're going to make this year is we're going to let our protector come in to this area here. So, Umar, if you're stuck, you can flip back to Matt and you guys can play down. So that's the 5 a.m. break. Okay. Now, I apologize for having you guys stand this long and watch. It wasn't my intent, but there was a lot of things to show you. And I want you to see what that fast break is supposed to look like. Okay? Now, what I want to do with you right now, very quickly, is we're going to do a little drill. I'm talk about running the floor. Everyone get in line behind me. You uh, are. Everyone get in line behind me. So we're going to straight line. We're going to learn how to run the court. What we're going to do, I'll demonstrate. We're going to run down here. We're going to push off. We're going to come in. Shoot. Follow our shot. We're going to come out. We're going to get wide. We're going to come down here, we're going to push off, angle in, shoot, follow a shot to the middle. We're going to keep it going all the way around the gym. You guys need to learn how to run the court. Ready? Go. 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 Under control. Come to the middle. Under control. Push up the other foot. I got these guys going, but look, let me tell you something. Remember we did change of pace, change direction in practice? I told you how important to push off the outside foot. I want you guys to jump in this drill, so right now like this, you run, and you turn. You're not under control. You come down the court, you get here, you push off the outside foot, you're under control, and you finish. Ready, go. Go. You see Coach Stevens right here, Mr. Look, slow down. Slow down. Get the step to the side. Slow down. Slow down. Six minutes, you can drink all you want. Let's go. Umar, Mark, quick. We're going to demonstrate one-on-one. 
funny. Ryan, come over here. Chandler, let's go. Matt Stoner. Okay, now, like, this is the defensive drill we do every practice. We call it one on one, don't quit. When you get beat on defense, you don't turn and stand. You turn and sprint and get back in front of the guy. Here's the rules of the drill. The out of bounds lines are this green line right here. The other out of bounds line is this green line right here. The job of the defensive player is to stay between his man and the basket and not get beat, number one. Number two, get as much pressure on him as he can while standing in front of him. You're going to play on bounds. The offensive player is going to try to get the ball to half court without losing it. That's the number one job. Don't lose the ball. The second job is to make sure if you can beat the guy, you can go ahead and beat him. It's a live drill. And then it goes offense to defense, defense out. The other guys in line are alert. If they see the ball, if this guy goes out of bounds, they call out of bounds, and the drill is over. One on one, don't quit. Throw it around every single practice. Okay, here we go. Let's watch this game. Let's go. Stay on balance. Stay on balance. Ah! Now, a couple of punching points you guys see. Number one. Hold up. Mark. The guy's going to try to turn the corner on you. You've got to get yourself over here and get your foot planted. So if there's contact, there's contact right here. Okay? Don't ever let somebody go by you. The second thing is this. If the guy goes by you, like this, you turn and sprint and get back in front. So let's do the same group, same way. Let's speak a little bit of group. Mark, you can this game. Hustle. Who wants to go behind your back? I'm going to sit back and sit Let me talk to you guys about going behind your back. I don't mind a player going behind his back, providing he's doing it, being clever and not fancy. Don't ever do stuff for show. And Umar was not doing that for show. He was being, he was being clever. And you don't ever want to go behind your back in traffic. When there's guys around. The play that Lubar made was actually a very nice play. I just don't want to give you guys more of my Ready? Go. Stay firm, Mark. Sprint. Sprint, Mark. So, Lubar, what's up, Dan Ford? Jeff's on that court. Hustle. Offense and defense, defense out. Mark runs back. Mark's going to come back here and coach. Come here, Mark. And Lubar's next up. Go ahead and go, Mark. Sprint. Anybody notice? Oh, the air. 
When the ball is in the air, when the ball is in the air, pick. I see Mark is always in a position that he can see his man and the ball without having to turn his head. Okay? Ball goes back here, pick. Chandler's in a position he can see his man and the ball without turning his head. Too good to play. Pick. And they've got to stay in the triangles all the way up. It's a live drill. Okay, ready? Pass. Go! Go! Good. Then we come back, switch it up. Offense, defense, defense out quickly. Let's go. Let's go. One back. Jump in your bench. Now, offense, now, ready? That's okay. Why don't you jump? I mean, I'm not doing that. Be clever now, please. Ready, pitch. 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 Go. Yeah, two on two for the baseline. The next thing we're going to do in our defensive series is we're going to extend this thing out. I'm trying to see if we have time to answer for you guys this time. I know what we can do. I'll demonstrate three on three. Four. One, two, three, four, five. You should have had a very close attention. Hold back to you. Come on, Four feet to two more. Okay, let's go for three on three from half four, guys. Let's up. You're going to be an offense. Get away over there. Bench up. Back to where you're going. Okay, guys, you guys want to get. Watch this drill. I want you guys to go stand behind that the, uh, behind that board. Behind that board. Put this on the Now, now we're going to take the same drill we did two on two, but we're going to make it three on three. These guys are going to play. I, I got five. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. We got three on three from half court. They're going to be going this way. They're going to try to score. If they score, well, you know what? You guys better turn around. He's talking about the other one. Okay? Chandler, going offense. Who are going offense? Matt Mark, what do we do? These guys are going to play three on three defense. If they score, they're going to jump in and press the other team coming back to the half court. Here we go. We're going to with this one. That's okay. Ready? Go. Yeah, it goes out. You're going to cover 
pass. And that's our four and four defensive shelter. Okay, let's bring it in, guys. Let's go. Okay. We guys, we really, we really didn't have time to get into. There's a couple of things we didn't have time to get into, but we do have to get out of the gym. And I want to tell you guys, I really, really apologize. You guys had to stand and watch so much. When you come to practice in the future, I know you're going to be doing, 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 doing. What we wanted to do was kind of give you a picture of what your practices are going to look like and kind of give you an idea of the things that you, you, you're going to be expected to learn and be able to do. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Coach, Co Coach Cosgrove for letting me come up here and see you guys. Uh, these guys uh, are like family to me. It's been a... We spent a lot of time together and I love my doing like they're my, my own kids. So that's got that's got nothing to do with you guys, but it was real special for me to, to be able to be back in the gym with, with these guys one more time. It was a, it was a, quite frankly it was an honor to be in the gym with you guys. So I want to thank you guys. And remember guys, I want you to know something. There's a there's a thing, and Coach Cost will give you a copy of it. There's a thing that's called the Pyramid of Success. And at the top of the Pyramid of Success there's a thing, Coach will explain it to you, it's called competitive greatness. Competitive greatness is love of a difficult challenge. And I can tell you right now, this year is going to be a very, very exciting year for this basketball team. Very exciting year. Because every time you go out and play, you're going to be playing against good competition. And that's what you want. You don't ever want to go to a gym. And, you know, if you, you go to a gym, if I know if I go to a playground, when I went to, when I went to UCLA, I'd go down to Plug Pavilion, and there'd be one of the guys in the varsity down at that end, Henry Bibby, he's a coach at SC. Now he'd be down there shooting around. And there'd be some guy from the dorms down the other end. Well, I know I could go play the guy from the dorms one on one. I'd beat him twenty six to two. And I knew if I went down there and played Henry Bibby one on one, he'd probably beat me twenty six to two. Which end of the gym do you think I went to? So I went down there because I wanted to play against the real club. I wanted to play against somebody good. I wanted to. Play. And when I got old, and I was thirty five years old, running basketball camps, there was a kid that I used to coach that I think he saw this summer, Tony Fullen. And Tony Fuller was assistant coach at Stanford there. And when I coached Tony Fuller, he played at Pepperdine, he played for the Detroit Pistons. And when Tony Fuller used to come back during the summers, we would meet up in the summer, up in the mountains, we had a basketball camp, and it would be 10 o'clock at night, and Tony would come to the gym. He's a player for the Detroit Pistons, I'm Craig Edelman, Jim Rat, bad basketball player. And Tony and I used to play one on one. Sometimes he beat me 26-0, he beat me 26-4, he beat me 26-6. But you know what I always did? I always tried. I always competed. And that's the only thing I would always expect of you guys. Anytime you step on a court, you always go and compete. You always go and try the very best that you can. And you can't do anything about that. There's nothing more that anybody can give than 100%. All right? Coach? Thanks, Coach. You guys are great. I'm looking forward to it, and I, I will. I'm going to get up one time during the year. I'll bring John up. John wanted to come to that, but I couldn't get home to pick him up from, uh, from work. I got stuck in, in, uh, in Anaheim. I'll bring him up. It's a tough time keeping up with these guys. Umar, check your shirt. You going to play with these guys this year? I'll tell you the kind of season Umar had last year. Umar had such a great year by the end of the year. The last five games, the last five games we played? Last six games we played. Every team we played, played a box and one against us. And Umar had been scoring a lot of points for us, but what it required was that he change his role on the team and get other people open. So when you go out to basketball court, always do what's going to help your teammates the most. It might be scoring points one night. It might be getting open. It might be passing the ball. I can tell you this, guys. You can ask Coach Cosgrove who's standing right here. Over all the years that I've coached these guys, I never once went and looked in the scorebook to see who scored what points. I know how you I don't need to look and see how many points you got to score. So how you play, is, it doesn't have a lot to do with how many points you score. It has to do with how much you help the group. Okay, let's get everybody in. Hands in. You know, we got to get, we got to do it the old-fashioned way. Let's go, let's, let's run over here. We always got all the parents here, too. Okay, we got to get all the parents. Come on. Okay. Here we go. Everybody in. Let's go. Let's get everybody in. We got to get that guy. We got to close the gym. Everybody's got to get hands in. Everybody. Everybody. We can't leave everyone in there. They're getting in. It's going to be a long way. Get them in there. Don't, don't be half stepping on me. Everybody in. Everybody in. One good one. On three, we're going to get a good, good. If it's not loud, let's come back and do it again. Spartans. On three. Good loud one. Ready? One, two, three. Spartans. Get back in. Get back in. I'm late. I gotta go. I'm trying to back to Hudson Beach. I got a 
soccer game tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I've got to set up the field at 8 and I can't get a loud Spartan. Come on now. Okay, Umar, what's up with this? We need a loud one. Ready? One, two, three. Spartans! Good job, you guys. Yeah.